Well, my name is Frank Cucci. Uh, I've been a member of the U.S. Navy SEAL team for 12 years, uh, recently retired. Uh, I'm going to discuss with you today the material that was taught uh, in the um, uh, Naval Special Warfare Unarmed Combat course. You're going to find this material to be very basic. Uh, it's going to be easy to learn. It's going to be effective. It could be applied in any situation uh, or any environment, uh, which was a very important uh, part of our training. Uh, so I hope you like the tape, and I hope you learned something out of it, and I hope it'll help you defend yourself and your family. Okay, we're going to start first in our stance. We're going to use a regular boxing stance, okay? It's an effective stance that'll enable you to move forward, back, left to right, and circular, okay? So we're going to start uh, with just uh, a basic comfortable boxing stance with your right hand here close against your rib cage. If you're right-handed, if you're left hand, put your right hand forward, okay? I'm right-handed, I'm going to put my left foot forward. My right hand is protecting my chin here. My right elbow is protecting my rib cage here. My chin is down so that if this hand wasn't even part of the action, I'd be protected by the shoulder. My chin would be down here and my hand would be protecting the right side of my jaw, what sometimes we refer to as a two-point cover. One point of cover here, one point of cover here. Once we involve the left hand, it's just at a 45 degree angle, elbow in, protecting the rib, and sitting here a little further out from your chin. This is our basic stance. If you notice on the, the ball of the rear foot, the heel is up like a spring, ready to, ready to spring off, okay? The first thing we're gonna do is talk about step and slide to the front. Okay, when we step and slide forward, everything has to be symmetrical here. If I step forward 10 inches, my rear foot comes up 10 inches. It's not 10 and 16 and I lose my, my structure. Okay, it's 10 and 10 and 10 and 10 back this way. Front, back. You can double front and you can double back, okay? Having some spring to your legs, making sure that the uh, heel is off the floor, using your toe as a springboard. Okay, so if you double forward, you can double back or triple forward or triple back. Okay, if you want to move left or right, if you want to move left, you move your left foot and slide your right to the uh, same side or move your right foot, slide your left foot over. You can double it up, two to the left, double it up, two to the right, constantly keeping your hands up, okay? You can go three to the left and you can go three to the right. Okay, and this is, this is your basic footwork. You can move front to back, front to back, front to back, like you're going to hit and get out, hit and get out. Or you can move back to front, back to front, evading, going back in, evade, go back in. The front to back can also be used as a fake, fake, get out, fake, get out. Back to front, front to back. Now, if you want to move to the right or circle to your right, you can kind of quarter turn or swing the rear foot around to the right, swinging all the way around to the left, keeping your lead foot at the, uh, uh, to the floor, spinning off your lead foot, quarter turn, quarter turn, quarter turn this way. Now, what you can do at this point, just to educate your, your footwork, just kind of mix it up, okay, or shadow box just your footwork. You can just kind of move around to the front, back, left, right, Just get a feel for where the ground is and where your feet are, how to move forward, how to move back, how to move left, how to move right, how to advance and retreat, okay? So take some time, work on that, and you'll find the basics are going to come much easier. Okay, now we're going to get into the arsenal, okay? Just like every good SEAL team, um, you're only as good as your weapons, okay? You're only as good as how effectively you use your weapons. So we're going to start talking about our strikes uh, with our hands, which are going to be basic punches derived from boxing, okay? And this may be simple to some people. This may be basic for some people. But uh, the mechanics that is gained from basic boxing will enable you to do a lot of things, okay? Uh, you're going to find everything is part of the equation. Body mechanics are very important, okay? Uh, if a lot of times we'll have a pistol, okay, and a lot of times in a close quarter situation, we're gonna, we'll use the pistol, the butt of the pistol, uh, to, uh, to hit the person. And you're going to find that the same mechanics that it takes to throw a punch is going to be hit here with the pistol, 
Okay, it's going to be applied with the weaponry as well. Okay, so uh, the basic boxing, although it may seem um, maybe uh, basic to some, it is very effective um, and it works. There's usually uh, people they don't want to spar against a boxer and a good wrestler, a good grappler. Okay, so it is it is a very valid skill to have, and that's where we start our people off. Okay. Now, from the, our basic stance here, the first punch we're going to talk about is the basic jab punch or lead punch. Now, the punch extends here from what we call home base. This is home base. Okay, it doesn't go down and then shoot out from here. So from the home base position, the jab hand extends straight out and will come back to home base. Okay, out and then back. Now, with all of our punches, to gain entry, we're going to have to put our footwork in there with it. So in order for us to make the move forward to hit our opponent, because hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat is a matter of motion, a matter of fluidity. No one's going to stand there and let you hit them, just like in combat. You're going to shoot at somebody, they're going to be shooting back at you, they're going to be running, they're going to be hiding. Um, so you have to have, uh, the footwork is kind of like a tracks on a tank. It's going to enable you to get in there and hit your opponent effectively. So as we deliver the jab, we're going to step and slide in also, and then you can get yourself back out. So you can work on this first one. Step and slide into the jab and get yourself out. Step and slide in, get yourself out. Now with all our punches, all the punches should be practiced with the step and slide footwork. Stepping in to deliver your combination and stepping back out uh, when you're done with it. Okay. So the next punch combination uh, I'd like to demonstrate is a jab followed by the straight cross, okay, which is off the rear, rear hand. You'll notice that the ball of the foot um, it is turned, my foot is involved, my hip is involved, and my shoulder delivers the punch. And then we go back to home base again. Step and slide, one, two, okay, and back. You can get yourself out. Make sure that the step and slide is put in with the punches. Okay, you could think of it as a one, two step, because sometimes it's hard to put the punch, the punch combinations and the footwork in combination, okay, if you're just getting started. Uh, so you can think of it as a one-two. As the punch is delivered, the feet come up from behind. Okay, and this is your base. And remember, if the foot slides forward six inches, the rear foot compensates six, six inches also. Okay, make sure you're not stepping out here like that, and then you have an open base. Uh, we need to be light on our feet. Like I said, hand-to-hand -hand combat is a, is a game of fluidity and motion. Okay, so again, back to it. Jab, cross and get yourself out. The next punch combination I'd like to cover. When you fire two straight, I want you to hook the left one. Okay, and you're going to find that this could be an elbow, this could be a hook, this could be any weapon off the left hand side of the body. We're just educating the body mechanics right now. So jab, cross, is what we call over left hook. Okay, and this is at a 90 degree uh, angle here. So we have the, the arm backing up the fist. Shoulder is protecting the left side of my jaw. And my hand here is protecting the right side of my jaw. You notice now I am pivoting with the ball of the foot, the knee, and the hip to get the body involved. It's, it's almost like your body's a gate. You have a line drawn down your body. The gate swings to the right. The gate will come back left. So balance has to be constantly compensated for when you're throwing your punches. Okay, this is going to make, uh, make you uh, an effective hitter. Okay, just like when we shoot. When you shoot your weapon, you're not running around. Uh, you, you get a stable position, and you take aim, and you fire your weapon, and you make your shots count. Same thing here. You want to involve your body mechanics. Wham, that's to the side of the head. Okay, so this is three punch combination. One, two, three. Get yourself out. Next one, four punch combination. Jab, cross, hook, and then you finish with the cross and get yourself out. Again, four punch combination. Stepping in, one, two, hook to the side of the head, fire the cross to finish it, and then you can get out. Okay, if I step in with jab cross, I will change the direction of the left. Instead of over left hook, it will lift up, okay? And this is to the jaw, okay? And again, you'll see how we're gonna change this to elbow and, uh, and other tools as we progress. One, two, see how I leave the shoulder here? I involve my legs, I lift it up, and then I follow with the cross. Practice getting out, and then closing the gap again. One, two, leaving the shoulder here. Involve the legs, I lift it up. Keeping this here, protect your jaw. 
fire with the cross and get yourself out. You'll see people a lot of times because the hook is kind of a pulling motion, they'll pull this hand down here like that. But you're going to find that, uh, if I can use my partner for, for one second, if I deliver jab, cross, and then hook here, and he covers to protect himself, he is going to return. His body is now pushed to the left, so it will be natural for him to push, come back to his right. So when you're delivering your punches, one, two, three, you keep this here because he may come back at you also. Okay? So you stay covered as you throw your punches or while you throw your punches. Okay, so we have jab, cross, dipping into the left uppercut, and then follow with the, with the right hook, with the straight right hand. Next punch combination. From the jab, the cross, I can low body hook. Now you notice my head is not up here and I hook to the body down here. It's going to set you up for the right cross. Okay. One, two, the weight stays on your front leg. You dig it into the body and then you can go back to your over left hook followed by the right hand and get yourself out again. Once again, one, two. Now you're in here. If I can use my partner. From here, this is one, two, and I'm here now. I'm in tight. This hooks, over left hook, followed by the right hand. Once again, one, two, you gain your entry. Keep this hand up, hook, over left hook, followed by the right hand. Whereas the uppercut is one, two, lifting the jaw up, follow with the right upper, or with the straight right cross. Okay, now, once these basic punches have been uh, worked on, okay, the, usually the next progression is to work on them uh, on your own, or what we call shadow box, okay, because it's kind of like a language. Uh, you may know a few words of a language, meaning you may know a few techniques, okay, um, or in SEAL Team, you may know how to shoot a gun, you may know how to dive, you may know how to jump out of an airplane, but if you're not a seasoned operator, if you have not been out in the jungle with your team, if you have not been in the water with your team and you know how, uh, how it flows, um, you're going to be ineffective. Uh, just like a language, if you only know a few words, when you go to the country and try to speak the language, you're going to find that you really don't know what you're doing or you're not going to be able to communicate effectively. So just with the punches also. You may know that this is jab, cross, hook, but just like a boxer goes into a gym every day, okay, he goes in there for maybe fighters uh, fighter fight for eight to ten years. Every day he goes in there, he's doing the same thing. Jab, cross, hook, cross, uppercut, overhand. And that's about it. So it's a matter of fluidity. Take the time, maybe five minutes during the day, and just become fluid with your punches. Okay, or what we call shadow boxing. Wow. So when, um, if you are in a, in a situation where you actually have to defend yourself, or in combat as, as we are, uh, these things come out uh, instinctively. Uh, you don't have to labor through uh, and try to remember uh, which technique to use uh, at what point. Okay, moving on. What we're going to do now, on the hook, we changed the path of the hook. We went up, okay, and we went to the side. This was over left hand, and this was upper cut off the left, the left hand. Now we're going to change the path of the right. When you jab high, I want you to sink the cross down to the body, okay? A lot of people will jab high and then punch low like that, which is going to leave yourself open for a, for a hit. So when you, bring, when you hit here, which occupies the high line, you cross down to the low line, but you bring your shoulders with you. Remember we talked about that two points of cover right here. So one and then two. You'll find that when we, we do knife fighting, you'll see sometimes the, the lead hand will fake. Bock! and this will, will go in. So very similar body mechanics, as you'll see. Okay, so if I have my partner here, uh, this is jab high, and then you cross low like this. Okay, and at this point you have to understand you are susceptible to getting hit yourself. But this is understanding the different paths that the punches could take. One, two. Now at this point you can go back into the left uppercut followed by the right cross. Or you can go one, two, into the body hook, and then hook high, and then right cross. Or you can single body hook, bang, right cross. Okay, from this position, when I hit here like that, one, two, whatever my choice is, I may high hook. 
Now the next punch I'd like to teach you after the hook, okay, remember we talked about the body's like a gate. The left hand side of the gate has moved. So if we switch here to give you a better view, after the left hook, you can come into the right uppercut, which is now changing the path of the right. Okay, first path was here, second path was here. Now this is an uppercut path. So one, maybe I went low with the cross, high with the hook, using my body again and my shoulder and my legs for the uh, right uppercut. Maybe finish with left hook, right hand. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, it could be any number of combinations. Just so that you are aware that your cross doesn't have to go here. Some of, a lot of people like to head hunt, what we call head hunt in boxing. One, two. Sometimes this is good. We'll set you up for that. Okay, we'll set you up for this, for this. This can change the path here. Okay, so this is the, the right uppercut. Okay, the same body mechanics that will deliver a right uppercut will deliver right elbow. Okay, or will deliver the knee. Okay, so you're going to find that these basic body mechanics are essential to uh, the more effective weapons as we move along in the tape. Okay, the next essential part of the training is putting these punch combinations onto the striking equipment. Okay, and what I have here is a pair of tie pads. You can use focus mitts or you can make something yourself to hold in your hands to train with your partner. You could even use your bare hands, okay? And the person could wear a pair of bag gloves uh, and you can do the, accomplish the same goals. Okay, what this is gonna do is, uh, in many martial arts, you'll find practitioners uh, punching into the air and uh, pulling their techniques maybe an inch or two from the target. But unfortunately, what this does is create a habitual false sense of distancing so that when the real thing comes, you're gonna find that uh, a person uh, oftentimes will, uh, will miss or the timing will be off or the distance will be off, okay, in, in a real, uh, whether that be sparring or, or combat. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, apply these basic punches onto the striking equipment to add uh, realism to the training. Okay, so if I take my training partner here, what we're going to do, we talked about the first punch with the jab punch, or the lead hand punch. I'd like you to put the, uh, uh, relating to right-handed fighters, the left hand pad out here, and he can work on jabbing. Now you'll find that uh, you don't want to be here where I can hit him and he can hit me. We want to be just outside this range here, okay, so that he's going to have to use his footwork to get in and make contact and then get back out. Okay, so for first one, jab punch, and then using the footwork, coming in and getting out. Okay, the next punch combination, jab cross, which we use the right hand because it's gonna give the uh, better angle for the cross to come in. Okay, so stepping in, one, two. Okay, again, one, two. Okay, and you'll notice uh, Kaseko will breathe out each time. Okay, in, in combat situations, you'll find people will hold their breath. Okay, you need to keep your body aerated. Uh, so we breathe out after each strike. Okay, very similar to a boxer, a Thai boxer. <laughs> Just like, uh, you're telling somebody to be quiet. Okay. Now, uh, from here, this would be jab, cross, and then we hold the pad on a 90 degree angle for the hook, creating the environment for him. Okay, that's the job of the pad holder, is to create the environment for uh, your partner. Okay, so this is representing uh, the person's head, meaning uh, straight hit, hook hit. Okay, again, one, two, hook, and then get yourself out. I mean, I can move around a little bit. One, two, hook. Okay, and we move around this way. One, two, hook. Good. Okay, next punch combination we talked about was jab, cross, over left hook, followed by the right hand. So this application here would be one, two, hook, followed by the cross. And then he gets himself out of range. Again, stepping into range. One, two, three, four, and then getting himself out of range. Okay. The next... Um, combination is going to be the jab cross followed by the left uppercut. Okay, and you're going to find again that when you deliver the left uppercut, make sure that the right shoulder dips down. When the right shoulder dips down, you're going to use your legs and your body um, will assist uh, the left uppercut to give it more power. So from here, this could be one, two, and I can hold it here. Left uppercut followed by the right hand. Again, one, two, three, four. We're out of range again. Again, one, two. You'll see the shoulders here. 
Left uppercut, right cross. Okay. Now, from here you can put any combination on, on your pads. Okay, from here now what we'll do is we'll jab and we'll body cross. Okay? We'll body cross from jab, body cross. Again. One, two. Move around a little bit. He comes in, enter in, jab, body cross. Okay, from that point, after the body cross, he may hook low and then hook high. One, two, three, four, and maybe follow with the right hand and get out of range. Again, one, two, throwing the cross to the body, left, left, right. One more time. Jab, right cross, left uppercut, left overhand, followed by the right cross. Okay. This is, you're going to find a very essential part of your training, again, as we discussed, to develop uh, the correct attribute of distancing, to get a feel for what the punch uh, feels like when you make contact, which is a, especially on the uppercut and the hook. Okay, it's a feel. You have to feel what your fist, uh, what the impact uh, does to your fist. Okay, a lot of times people will sprain a wrist hooking to the side or hooking upward. So this is a very important part of the training in which you'll find uh, the more you do train like this, uh, the more comfortable you will feel with your punches. Usually we try to cultivate our techniques in four methods of training, okay? And methods of training is, is essential, okay? If, if your uh, martial arts style or, or hand-to-hand -hand combat style, whatever it may be, does not have a method of training, if you can't spar, if you uh, cannot make contact and throw combinations, uh, or throw techniques in combinations with full power, uh, I, I really think you're missing something. So these, uh, even if you're uh, not a boxing style, you can incorporate this to any, any striking art. Okay, the um, four methods of training that we cultivate our techniques through are number one, working the form, or like we did in the beginning, beginning of the tape. Just uh, shadow box, uh, shadow boxing the footwork, uh, shadow boxing uh, the hands, okay? and becoming fluid with your punch combinations. Okay, that's the first one. The second one is usually on the, on the equipment, again, so that we can make contact with full force in combination. Okay, that's the thing. With full force and in combination. Okay, that's a very important part of your training. The third method is we use a heavy bag or stationary bag so that we can deliver, again, full contact blows against a piece of equipment that represents the body. And then fourth and, and final, sparring. In other words, gloving up and, uh, and working with your partner, okay? And the key element to sparring is that you don't want to hurt your partner. You want to work competitively with your partner, but uh, not hurt him. If you hurt your training partner, you, you're going to have nobody to, to train with, and uh, you don't want to you don't want that to get too competitive because then uh, nobody's learning. It just turns into a street brawl. So uh, those are the four very important uh, keys to developing good technique. Okay, number one, working your form or working your shadow boxing. Number two, on the uh, handheld pads. Number three, heavy bag or stationary bag. And number four, in sparring. Because let's face it, if you want to learn how to swim, you have to get in the water. So sparring is a very important part uh, of your training. Okay, the next thing we're going to talk about is defense, how to defend against these same punches we just learned. Okay? The first thing is that you have a good stance and your hands are in the correct position. Your chin is down and your hands are up protecting your face. Okay, this is what you want to protect is your, is your head and your chin. Remember we talked about the two point cover, one and two, keeping your chin down. Okay? Now, the next thing we want to talk about, uh, or the second element of defense, is footwork. Which is like we talked about um, in the beginning of the tape. is keeping the right distance between you and your partner, okay? So that you can strike and you can counter effectively, okay, without getting stuck in one spot. Uh, so with the proper footwork, you can evade your, your partner's punches just by moving, okay, or spatial relationship. And also, you can move in, you can go in for a takedown or a clinch, or you can smother him uh, with the footwork also. So what we'll do is we'll start off um, with the, the first defense of the first punch, the jab. <clears throat> Again, uh, we can just simply maintain our space here like that, okay? Spatial relationship, okay? Learning a distance, learning our distance. It's all, it may seem basic, okay? But it's, it is all part of the equation of becoming a good, well-rounded fighter, 
And that's what we're, we're aiming for in SEAL Team, is to become well-rounded, okay? So number one, jab may come, I may just move out, and then I may select the time to hit, okay? I may, I may just simply evade so that I can go back in and make the hit. Okay, the second one I want you to do is just either parry or cover. So this could be either catch, catch or parry. Parry or cover. Parry is just a slight hand movement from right to left, wiping it off. Or the catch, which is just a catch here like that. Okay. The next one is parry and slip. Maybe uh, you don't have the luxury of, of the footwork, and you need to slip your head. You notice how my left shoulder comes down. I'm, I'm throwing a piece of paper over the shoulder like that. Again, parry and slip. Parry and slip. Whereas this was the parry, this was the catch, and this was parry and slip. Okay, I, I like to teach this hand always stays up. A lot of good boxers can get away with this hand being down here and just covering because they have the ability to do that. But I would like to keep this hand up because at any time this, that you're going to find this hand is going to fire. Okay, so parry, catch, parry and slip. Now, uh, any straight line attack can be parried. And that's what we teach uh, to the SEAL team guys. It's very easy to remember. If the cross comes, jab, and the cross comes, I can parry it as well. One, two, or catch, 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 or parry, parry. Or I can parry and slip and parry and slip. This hand meets this shoulder. This hand meets this shoulder. And you notice how I dip inside. This is very good if I don't have the luxury of space. One, two, or I want to go in for a clinch or takedown. Okay, one, two. This is parry and slip off jab cross. One, two. Or I can just parry or catch like that. Keeping your hands up. One, two. Now, if the hook comes, any hook, say jab cross hook, I would like you to cover, okay? And not just cover with the hand, but cover with the whole arm so that you have some substantial uh, protection between your jaw. Uh, and his fist. Okay, so I want you to lift it up here, keeping your jaw down. This is what you want to protect so that you don't get knocked out. So the hook punch, again, jab, cross, cover. Cover. And this is important to practice this, okay, to cultivate it so that you become educated to this, to this line of attack. Okay, he may go jab, cross, hook one, and then cross. And I may cover the cross here. One, two, cover, cover. Or this may be a hook. He may jab, cross, left hook, right hook. And again, keeping my jaw down and keeping my opposite hand up as well. Okay? And you see how this is, there's no space between here. A lot of people will lift the hand up and create space between the face and the jaw. And you have kind of a reverberation effect here of your arm hitting your face. Okay? Keep your chin down and absorb the blow. So this is very simple. Any straight line attack, you can parry. Any hooking attack, you can cover. So this is what we usually drill, okay? It, uh, it may seem basic, but it's, it's very effective. One, two, three, four. And you can work on this with your partner. Okay, now the next punt, uh, defense, if we parry this jab, remember, parry or catch. When the cross comes, you can just sh stop it like that. Okay, again, one, two. You see how you keep your chin down. And if I make a motion, I make a little to the left hand side here. One, two. Now you notice the hand position on this one. From here, one, two. The side of the neck, right here, okay? It's almost like a handle for you. It will stop his momentum. Okay, again. One, two. Jaw covered, head down. And then of course, you can follow up with your basic combinations, which we'll get into in our next segment. The next one, if I jab here and it's a wide punch, I may bob and weave, okay? The initial dip is inside, and I come to the outside. So this is inside to outside, bob and weave from right to left. And again, can follow up with a left hook. One, two, follow up, follow up. Okay, after the cross, when the cross comes here, Instead of just parrying and waiting, you can parry and hit right away. Again, one, two, three, and follow with as many punches as you'd like. One, sector out a little bit. Again, hit with the cross, hook, cross. 
One more time. Okay, next one. When I, when I parry the jab here, when the cross comes, this is a fade away or what we call shoulder roll. One, fading away, keeping your jaw down. Cover the right hand side of your jaw with your hand. Again, one, two, right. Now if the hook comes after that, one, two, you can cover, or you can one, two, bob and weave, and continue your punch combinations. Okay, talking about the counters, okay? If you make a motion, it, it's kind of common sense. When you parry the jab here, if I shoulder stop, I will then continue to, with the cross, hook, cross. Usually we'll follow in three punch combinations. If I bob and weave inside to outside, left hook, right hand, left hook. So you let your body mechanics dictate what your counter is going to be. Okay, that's why it's important to be fluid and shadow box your punches. Okay? Uh, from here, if I parry the right hand, deliver the cross, I can then hook, cross, and hook. Again, one, two, hit, hit, and hit. Okay, the bob and weave. One, hook, cross, hook. You can cover, and then cross, hook, cross. Okay, the next important part of training um, effectively against the punches is to have your uh, partner put the pads on and throw punches at you, okay? This way you can effectively defend against them and put combinations in behind them. Okay, so the first thing we talked about is just um, the jab, okay? So again, you can just jab. Uh, when your partner jabs at you, you can just evade, again, by either parry and catch or parry and slip, and then you can return just one simple jab, okay? Again, one. Okay, next one. We talked about when the, when the cross comes here. So when we parry the jab, we can parry the cross. Okay, and then your holder will have to bring the right pad back so that you can cross, hook, cross. And you're gonna find that when we return, we usually return in sets of three. Okay, so on this one again, one. Parry, cross, hook, cross. Okay, the next one we talked about is cover. So if your partner, jab, cross again, one. Two, I can cover. Return, cross, hook, cross. Okay, again, one, cover, cross, hook, cross. Now the next one, <clears throat> jab, cross, over left hook. One, I can catch this one and catch that one, or I can catch this one, cover this one, and then cover the hook line. Immediately, hook, cross, hook. Okay, and these, all these counters are based on your body's natural movements, or what we call gross mechanics. I've covered, right side of the body is forward, return using the left hand side of the body. Okay, so once again, now maybe the person does jab cross, left hook followed by right hook, or jab, hook, uh, right hook or cross. So jab, hook, and then cross. Again, jab, hook, cover the cross, or the right hook, to follow up with cross, hook, cross. Again, jab, hook, cross, follow up with three. Okay, the next one we talked about. Uh, on that, that is a very, uh, it's very simple, and it's, and it's easy to learn, it's easy to remember that if any punch comes in straight line, jab or jab cross, you can just parry it. Okay, parry. And if it comes in hook line, cover, cover, cover. Jab, cross, hook, hook, one, two, cover, cover. Okay, again, one, two. Okay, and this may look very unsophisticated, but it is very effective. Again, okay, now, parry and slip. If I parry and slip the jab, one, and then parry and slip the cross, Immediately from here, I can follow with a hook, cross, hook, okay? Or, parry and slip, parry and slip, and I can just get out and jab again. One, two, I evade, jab. Okay, and the person can hold the left pad up. Again, one, two, 
This is the quarter turn footwork. Get out, jab, move outside. Again, one, two, hit. Okay, and you can follow up from there. One, three, and slip, move out. One, and then follow up, one, two, three. Again, three, and slip, pack, move out, jab. Go into the jab cross hook. Okay, now, the next one. When he jab crosses, we're gonna do the shoulder stop. So one, two, followed by cross, hook, cross. Again, stepping into it. On this one, you have to be careful because if I go like this, and I just kinda halfway put the arm out there, I kinda lean back, you're gonna get nailed, okay? This one again, one, in chin down and then from here cross hook cross one more time one cover cross hook cross okay next one from here if I parry the jab when the cross comes you can parry and hit right away without the pad again one parry hit and then hook cross hook one more time Third, hit, and then hook, cross, hook. Okay, next one. I can parry the jab. Bob and weave under the cross. So I come up with my right shoulder forward because I'm bobbing and weaving from inside to outside. When you do the bob and weave, try not to use your legs too much, but use your upper body. Your legs are gonna be involved. Use your upper body, make a circular motion, okay? The right punch comes inside to outside. Left punch comes inside to outside. So, when the cross comes again, one, dip, two, hook, cross, hook, again. One, two, hook, cross, hook. Okay, maybe the jab, cross, hook comes and I bob and weave under this here. And then I cross, hook, cross. Again, one, two, three, cross, hook, cross, and get out, okay? Now, with the uppercut, maybe he jabs high and hits me to the body with the right cross as we worked on. Jab high, right cross to the body. So instead of, dro instead of dropping our hand here, because that just may be a feint, and then he comes in with the over right hand or left uppercut. I would like you just to cover with the elbow. Pow. Turn your body a little bit, cover that floating rib. That's the target, but make sure you cover your jaw also. Because many people will look down and then loop the right hand over. Say I was throwing the punch on my partner, one, and maybe look here, but go wham, throw the over right hand. Okay, so from here, one, Cover, two, okay, and then maybe he hooks the body, three. Again, one, protect the body shot, protect the left hook here. Again, one, turn slightly, turn slightly. And then from here, you can go ahead and counter with left uppercut and right cross. Again, one, two. If I wanted to counter right from here, the same pad that delivers the strike is the pad that he's going to hold for for the counter. Again, one, two, uppercut, hook, cross. Or you can do with the cross. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Now if he jab cross left uppercut to the ribs. One, two, three. From here again the same pad that hits is the same pad that presents itself for the left uppercut. If you can do the left uppercut, keep the pad flat so the person can use his body and follow with the cross. Again, one, two, three. Left uppercut, right cross. One more time. One, two, cover. And get yourself out. Okay, once you become uh, accustomed to 
the defense is you can put this all together, okay? And then your partner just kind of free feeds you, okay? Maybe he sets it up, he wants to see me do a jab, holds the left hand up. <laughs> Maybe he wants to see me do another jab, <laughs> okay? Or he might tell me to double up on the jab. <laughs> Two step and slides. Again, footwork's very important. <laughs> Usually a right-handed fighter will circle to his left because the lead foot is here. Okay, but for the camera purpose, we'll just stay right here. Okay, maybe he wants to see us see me do the jab cross. Get out. Again, jab cross. Then next one, jab cross, hook. So he'll say three. One, two, three. Out. Step in. Get out. Next one, maybe our four count combination. One, two, three, four. But after this one, maybe he hooks to the head. I bob and weave, cross, hook, and then bob and weave here, hook, cross. Again. Get yourself out. So you can start to put these kind of combinations together uh, to enhance your defensive ability. Okay, this will conclude uh, the basics tape uh, number one. But even though uh, to some this may seem uh, unsophisticated, these are the mechanics that are required to deliver good combinations when we start to talk about elbow, knee, takedowns, also with the weaponry too. Okay, when we start talking about, say we carry machete in the, in the jungle, the, the proper body mechanics and how to, how to swing this thing effectively. Okay, you're gonna, you're gonna see how the same mechanics uh, that the, uh, that the boxing and the basic strikes brought out in you will enable you to become effective with uh, whether we're talking about the dagger, okay, or whether we're talking about the sword, or uh, in our situation, a lot of times we use this. Again, hitting, hitting, okay, you're gonna use the knee, we're gonna use the elbow, okay, but we have to start somewhere. This is the tracks on the tank, okay, this is what's gonna enable us to get in, to move, to hit effectively, and keep our balance, and get out clean, okay? So we look forward to seeing you on the next tape.